continually like transmuting everything. Everything that comes through you is being transmuted, transformed. Everything. Every thought, every feeling is being taken through you and is being turned into something. It's going to manifest in some way. Because who you are is the one that's creating and playing in this playground. And the body is the form that you have filled to be able to experience this playground. Because after all, why have a playground if you don't have a body to play on? Yeah? Okay. You know that old... Uh, the old... Uh, I can't remember who it was when I was the old this is some old guy that thought he was a Christian. And they used to have commercials and like he was on TV and he would run around and he'd be like Have you lied? Have you ever lied? Well that makes you a liar. Have you ever uh, thought lustful thoughts? Well the Bible says that if you look at a woman with lust in your heart you have committed adultery. So you are a adulterer and he would use this law and people would be like yes I'm an adulterer and he's like God hates these things you must repent and you can be saved Have you? I don't remember who that guy is but he had this whole training system on how to use the law to win the lost uh, Ray something Ray anyway, he's a good boy his theology I don't recommend it. <clears throat> Are you your actions? <clears throat> Where do actions come from? Emotion, and emotions come from thoughts. So if you're not your thoughts, then are you the emotion that's coming out of those thoughts? Is the emotion bad? No. Are the thoughts bad? No. Are the actions that might come from it bad? Who to who? So they can be hurtful to the form? And by hurtful to the form, you just mean that the form is going to take on a different form? Or do you, what do you mean by that? There's a there's a, a wide road that leads to destruction. Many enter by it. That wide road that leads to destruction is still full of the Christ. It is just as much Christ as the narrow road that leads to life. It's just your having to walk through the pain and the suffering of being destroyed so you can realize you're the Christ. That's all it is. Because essence isn't destroyed, is it? No. So who's the one that's being destroyed? A hurt, a wounded. The Austin just posted a video. It's like a one minute. It's called "How to Deal with Annoying People" or something. It was like one minute, and it, in it, I was just talking about how people that are annoying you are your gift. Like they're a gift to you. <clears throat> Because they're bringing the destruction to these judgments. They're bringing destruction. If you can see it this way, if you can recognize they're a gift, then you're, they're, they're beginning to be used in your life to bring an end to the things that have been hurting you or hindering your existence, your conscious state of existence. But if you see them as your enemy or as, ah, you just see them as the annoying person that they are, or, then they're not, then you're just going to keep on walking through this cyclical nature of being annoyed. Until eventually you realize that annoying people are a gift. Sometimes I am that annoying person to you. And if I haven't been already, trust me, I will be. <laughs> I will be your best gift ever. <laughs> 
This is really important because in 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 Reagan immediately echoed what probably everyone else might feel at some point or has felt at some point and what I get told all the time. Your but actions hurt people. You have to stop. You you have to consider everyone else before you do anything. Who's the one that's hurt? The only one capable of suffering loss is the one that's attached to a narrative. The ego attaches to everything in its past and attaches to stuff. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. Mine. And then the ego is quite capable of loss. Isn't that true? So when somebody's form transitions before they have understood that they can actually shift the form. Let me back up. If you want to... Uh, if you want to create something physically, shift the form, we all understand that we can do that in some, to some degree. Isn't it true? Mm -hmm. By eating, by exercising, by working out, by, by stretching, by moving, we can shift and change that form. You have the power and the potential to shift and change that form way more than any linear timeline can. Age does not nearly have the power that you have to be able to actually go move into this body and shift it and change it. Yes? Mm -hmm. So we understand this, and we know that society at least understands this to some degree because they're spending billions and billions of dollars on health product, on beauty product, on, on trying to shift and change the form. Recognizing that, yes, we can to some degree change the form transform our bodies we spending billions and billions of dollars trying to do what transform the mind by going to schools and part you know getting higher education yes and yet we've neglected the biggest thing and that is the one that actually gets to produce all the change and bring forth all the change Yes, yes, and superior. You are not your thoughts. You're not the form. If somebody sticks a gun to your head and pulls the trigger, are you dead? So when that form, somebody puts a, pulls the trigger, puts a put, puts a gun to my head, pulls the trigger, this form comes to you. Think it has come to an end? Has it come to an end? It changes. We understand from last night, right? All energy is not never is, is not destructible. It just changes form. Yes, it changes. It's called transformation. It just shifts. It changes. Am I dead? No. That's why Jesus looked at one of the guys that wanted to come follow him. He's like, "But my dad died. I got to go bury him." He's like, said the most hurtful thing ever. This guy's grieving. My dad is dead. And Jesus looked at him and said, let the dead bury the dead. You come and follow me. Because. Is that like the perceived dead or the perceived dead? Yes. Yes. Yeah. If you have a death consciousness, how can you follow life? A lot of times people think that some of those things are, are very hurtful. They think that some of my behaviors are hurtful. I don't, I, my cut, like when my cousin passed away recently from brain cancer, everybody's, you know, he's, he was a young guy, he was 40 years old. He passed away from brain cancer. He left a two year old daughter and a seven year old daughter and his wife. And, and so everybody it was like a really emotional time for all my family. Everybody was really upset and tore up and I had zero feelings about it. And this is why people think I'm psychotic. <laughs> They're like, something's wrong with Silas. No feelings. And Beth, even at moments, she's, she's even said, well, if I died, you wouldn't even care. 
if something happened to the kid, you wouldn't even care. Like in the past, she had said those things because she had, couldn't comprehend how I could not care. And I'm like, I do, I, I deeply care about who you are. I don't deeply care about who you are not. If I recognize that JJ, my cousin, did not pass away, he did not, he's all he did was that body shifted form. He's very much, just as much with me as he was before. As a matter of fact, probably more so now because he's probably a little bit more aware of who he actually is now than he was before. Then am I missing out on something? Am I missing him? Should I miss him? What does it look like to miss somebody that's no longer there? Is it just the concept that's missing the concept? If you identify as the form, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, if you identify in the form, you're going to naturally miss the form of the individuals that are not present anymore, the, per the persons that are not present, right? If you identify in the form as the person, then when another person leaves, whether they walk away, whether they physically transition what the world calls death, whatever that is, then you will miss that person. What are you missing is actually just the idea, the concept of who they were, the narrative of who they were, right? Yes. That and that, when we miss that, we're literally, the, all of that missing, is it ever felt good? It just is like this, it's like a heavy, it's like a weight you carry around. Yeah. It's an idea. Don't miss your father. I mean, he's right. He's always been with you. Don't miss the idea. Be be with him. So this is an opportune time, Reagan, to not fight the tears and just let go. Okay, this is what I mean when I say let go. If you gotta cry, cry. If you feel like crying, there is just cry. It's okay. I don't even have to put you on the spot or anything. Just be willing to cry. Don't sit there. If the tears start to come. Don't sit there and fight. You know, being no, no. Don't let go. Your dad did not die. There's nothing that's new. Like at least whenever I had law to tell me that he was like in heaven and I had something to hope in. To look forward to. Yeah. Heaven is right here. So what happens is the more that we realize who we are, the more you're we're recognizing things. So we it's we're real quick to say that we are spirit and that we're not the form. But then as soon as the form leaves, we go, ah, oh, I don't know what it, what, who I am. I don't know what is. Do you see how it's easy to believe something? But then push comes to shove. Is this reality? Yeah. What if I told you that your father didn't go anywhere? That the essence and the spirit of who he is has always been just one with you. And what if I told you that at some point your father will recognize what it looks like to be able to take on form again? There's nothing like That's seeing it. visuality. You would recognize it. So 
So when I say these things, people immediately go to the place of, oh, well, Silas believe in reincarnation. No, I'm not talking about reincarnation. Reincarnation is a form of heaven and hell. Reincarnation is based on how good you were, what you've done. If you were a really good boy, you you kind of upgrade. If you're not a real really good boy, you downgrade and you you keep taking on lesser form, and then maybe you'll be a good grasshopper. And and if you're a really good grasshopper, then you can become a cricket. And then if you're a really good cricket, then you can become a mouse. And if you're really a mouse, then you can become a cow. (laughs) And then if you're a good cow, you can become a person again. And if you're a good person, maybe you can become a god or a demigod or that's reincarnation I'm not talking about reincarnation all of those are just religious concepts that try to understand that which is what is is it has, it never goes anywhere listen you can't destroy it were you born No, no, no. Were you born? This body was born, but were you born? Have you always been with the Father? Is spirit born? When a child comes into the world, when is the spirit brought into that being? Was the spirit actually born or was the spirit always there? taking on form and filling that little being. Which one? Yes. I think I I think I'm saying yes to what you're saying. (laughs) I'm not I didn't actually get it that well. But it's just spirit first. Mm -hmm. Yes. When we think we're born, we're thinking we're literally being born. Um, Are you still with me? Yeah, okay. I love you. When we think we're being born, we think that now this, this being has come into the world. This is, the spirit has always been. It's like when I was telling Uriah at his eighth birthday, when I took him out, I said, you've always been, you're, you're the ancient one too. It's always been. You've never not been. You're just identifying as an eight-year-old because you think that you are this little body and this little mind that has very limited information. And you believe that you are this little third grade, oh, whatever grade in third grade or whatever. This is who I am. And he begins to identify in this narrative, this story. It's not who he is. It's not who he is. He's always been. And I am the same thing with Uriah that I'm doing with all of you, introducing him and you to who you are beyond that narrative. The only difference is Uriah has only had eight years of programming. You've had a lot more than that. Where you have believed so strongly that you are your thoughts, the emotions, the actions, and the form of the manifestations that they take on. The reason why we know that this is what we've believed about ourselves and that these are the things that we've done is because if you didn't, you would stop judging anyone. There would be never there'd never be judgment. If you if you recognize that you're not your thoughts, if you recognize you're you're not the emotions, you're not the actions, you're not the beliefs, and you're not the manifestations of those beliefs, then there would be no judgment. There would just be an isness or presence. You would actually be together with people and actually be with them in the moment. And nothing that they've done in the past would be relevant to you. Nothing that they were present tense doing would be relevant to you. It would just be a celebration of life. And you wouldn't be hanging on to it. So I build this beautiful house. I have the patio. I have the barbecue. I have all this stuff that I create and I bring you over. And then you begin to think Silas is successful. Look at what Silas has done. You create a narrative about Silas. Bullshit. This is not Silas. Silas is not any of those things. 
don't you dare. It's like when people always, when I was involved in Christianity and people would always come up and they would see that I was very gifted and they would come up and they'd be like, wow, you know, like compliment me. Wow, you're called to be an apostle. Like I just see a real strength and a gift in you. You're called to be an apostle. You're going to lead and blah, blah, blah. And literally I came to the point where I, when I started realizing who I was, I was like, stop it. Like people would come out and say, stop insulting me. I'd look at them and say, stop insulting me. And they're like, what? This is the highest bullshit. You're limiting me. They think Reagan is a beauty queen. They're limiting her. Or whatever they call these pageant girls. Is that what they call it? Queens. <laughs> Queens. <laughs> really? What do you think called Queens? I don't know. I'm sure it's like beauty queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> you, but you can refer to me as Queen. <laughs> All right. So. You're not your thoughts. You're not your actions. Right? Are you your beliefs? So beliefs actually go much deeper than thought. Beliefs take on a whole new thing. It's like the thought that you're persuaded, persuaded, persuaded is true. So you have a thought. This thought begins to produce some emotions. The reason why religious systems have been so successful is because they play on your emotions. They manipulate your emotions. You notice I am not in any way, shape, or form trying to manipulate your emotions. I am pointing to who you are beyond them. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was telling, I was telling, I don't know if it was, but recently I said, you know, it's funny, people come to me because they want to let go. They want freedom from the ego and from the narrative and from all these things, but then they get mad at me when I piss it off. <laughs> and then if they're having, if they're really struggling, and remember, who's the one that's struggling? The ego? And then I'm struggling, I'm struggling, and I don't comfort the ego. I'm like, it'll be okay, baby. It'll be, oh, the little ego will be okay. When I don't comfort the ego, they say, you're not there for me. You're not, you don't care, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, you came to me for freedom, but now you want me to comfort the thing that you actually want me to rid you of. So you're actually, you want me to encourage the thing that you want me to get rid of. I'm not going to do it. I'm done doing it. I don't care if you think I'm mean. I love you. I love you enough to see something that you might not see. And to point it out, even if it's going to piss you off. That which is requires no belief. It requires zero belief. Right? It just is. If Elisa decides God is not real... Who cares? God is still very real. She will begin to manifest negativity and some things in her life, in her existence, especially in this physical form, the playground, that's not a lot of fun. So you could picture a bunch of kids in a, on a huge, massive playground, like an amusement park, Disney World-sized playground with rides and slides and tunnels and the funnest of the fun playgrounds that you've ever seen, right? Every one of you would be like, yes, I know I would be like, yes. Trampolines and all of this. And you have a whole group of kids that are over there going, people can get hurt. This is not going to be, this is not good. There needs to be safety precautions and laws. We need to establish rules. We need to make sure things are going to, 
this is not good. People are going to get hurt, and they're and they're walking around the playground really carefully, and they're and then you have kids that are just like, and they're going crazy, and they're playing on the playground, right? And they're having fun, and maybe they get hurt. Maybe they get hurt a little bit, but they get back up and they keep playing. And they're having fun. The one that's abiding by all the little laws and creating all the laws in their head, they're not having fun. <clears throat> You can jump, but only this high, because you don't want to hurt. What up? What happened? What happened? Stuart. What happened? <laughs> Some of you do not have a reference point for that, I can tell. And that's okay. It's the same thing, like, if you're, like, playing a sport or doing something like that, when you don't go all out because you're afraid to fail, you're going to get hurt. You're never going to win. And you're going to get hurt. Yeah. 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 And you can tell between them, like, either playing not to mess up, and then between them just playing. <laughs> yeah. So, in sports, you're learning, you're learning... You're, you're getting all this information. You're learning how to do whatever it is, whether it's exercise, how to lift with proper form, mind-muscle connection, everything that you're learning in sports. It's, it's every little position and, and all the stuff that goes into that position. You're learning and learning and learning so that you can let go of all that you've learned. Because as long as you're hanging on to all the thoughts, like in, in basketball or in football, with kids that are trying to remember the plays, those teams suck. But when you have you, – it's, when it's second nature – you're just out there flowing and playing. You can tell when a kid's loose and he's he's just loose. But when they're thinking, they're not loose. They're they're just they're in their head. They're they mess it all up. This is all about flow. It's about letting go. It's what drew me into martial arts, Eastern martial arts, is because in Kung Fu they teach you. I'm, I'm teaching you something so that you can let it go. I want to teach you the forms so that you can let them go, so that you can just flow within it instead of being this mechanical. Because a mechanical system can be uh, deconstructed and figured out by your opponent, but the flow can't be. When you're just flowing, it can never be figured out. You don't know what's coming next. Even the person that's moving doesn't know what's coming next. They're in full-on flow state. But if you're just mechanical in every action, then you know what's coming next. Right? But if you're not mechanical, no one knows. You don't even know. <laughs> this is why people get nervous in my school and in my, te in my teachings and stuff because they don't know what's coming next. The reason you don't know what's coming next is because I don't know what's coming next. There is no next for me. Just here. Because you're realizing who you are beyond beyond the, the belief structures, beyond the form, right? Okay. Who are you? This is so important for deconstructing, deprogramming the mind. Because what the mind does is the mind creates this narrative. This is who I am. I am this form. I am this smile. This five foot seven, six, seven form, whatever it is, right? And I... I look like this, I, I act like this, this is my personality, <clears throat> I adopt this whole narrative about age, I've been numbering my days, I believe lots of things, beliefs are so powerful, to Reagan's point, she was exhausted last night, Kaylee was dozing off, she's like, catching herself dozing off, Reagan kept dozing off last night, Stephanie said, yeah, my body's not doing real well right now how many of you might have felt okay these things are because you believed them 100 percent, you're feeling those ways because you believed it when you and you you believed it you experienced it and the experience becomes your reality just like if you have a thought that produces an emotion you might have a thought silas is an asshole thought goes through your head that was messed up that he would say this to me hurt me He's an asshole. Now you have negative feelings towards me. And now those, now listen, those negative feelings aren't hurting me. 
I don't have the negative feelings. You have them. You're just blame shifting, just like Adam and Eve did in the garden. Them, their fault. They did it. No, 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 no. I'm not responsible for your negative feelings. You are. <laughs> so I'm teaching my children this and I'm teaching you guys this. When my children come to me and they say, Riley punched me in the face. You know, so I didn't say one of the boys did it because it's always Riley. <laughs> Riley punched me in the face and she's the wild one. Oh my god, she kicked me in the nuts. Or she's always like going for the ball sack and stuff. You know, when you're a 10 year old girl and you have brothers, you learn real quick. Uppercut. <laughs> Kick them in the, you know? Because she's this little thing, but she's so feisty. And so, Riley did this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, how, did it make you, how did it make you feel, Micah? Oh, man. Angry. It's her fault. She makes me so angry. No. And I talked to him about him. And he's so mad at me because instead of. My going to Riley and punishing her, I'm talking to him. Why? Wow, it's her fault. Why aren't you talking to her? Why are you talking to me? Because, no, you are responsible for how you feel. She does not cause these feelings. You did. No, she did it. She caused the feelings. She kicked me in the nutsack. Clearly, she caused the feelings. She called me a name. She insulted me. Clearly, she caused these feelings. No, no, no. You are causing the feelings based on how you're thinking based on your judgments. 